Hello students, welcome to Learner's Planet. Let us uh, start the new chapter now today that is heredity and evolution. In the previous chapter we were discussing about process of reproduction, process of asexual reproduction as well as the uh, sexual reproduction and during the reproduction there is the generation of a new individual organism from the existing one. If it is asexual, single parent is involved and if it is sexual reproduction then definitely the two parents are involved in that particular process. And of course, during this process of reproduction, uh, the uh, genetic material of the parent uh, organism is transmitted into the next generation. So this transmittance or this uh, uh, transfer of this genetic material from one generation to the next generation is known as heredity. Right. So, in this uh, in this particular chapter, we are going to discuss about the uh, about this particular process that is the inheritance of the genetic material, inheritance of various characteristics from parental generation to the next generation. And this particular study, or uh, this uh, the uh, this branch of science which deals with the study of in, uh, inheritance, that is known as the genetics. And genetics, it always deals with the inheritance uh, of the characteristics which is known as the heredity. Uh, during such inheritance, there is the uh, alteration in the uh, genetic uh, material or in the genes or the DNA, isn't it? And this type of variations brings about certain uh, alterations in the characteristics in the next generation. And when such type of alterations they accumulate in an individual, it leads to the generation of a very different, a very uh, new type of um, uh, characteristic in the particular uh, organism. And of course, uh, this is actually the big, this is the base for the evolution. What is evolution? Evolution means the uh, appearance of certain new characteristics in the species or uh, the disappearance of the, uh, uh, in the organism due to which it may become a new species too. So in short, what we would like to state here in the introduction is that whether it is heredity, evolution or reproduction all these three processes they will always uh, uh, they are under they are going hand in hand here is this uh, small diagram which is showing the inter uh, interrelationship between the process of reproduction heredity and evolution and all three processes they always goes hand in hand none of it is independent of each other See, during the reproduction, new organisms are being generated from the parental organisms. And for this process to occur, the uh, genes or these characteristics are to be transferred from one generation to the another generation. And of course, it is in the form of genes. So, this transfer of genes is known as inheritance and this inheritance is termed as heredity. It is known as the inheritance or the transmit, uh, transmission of various characters from one generation to the next generation is known as the heredity. Now, when this process is taking place, right, uh, transmission is taking place in the form of DNA, isn't it? And this DNA, uh, when it has to be transferred, initially there must be the duplication of this DNA. Else what will happen? Once the DNA is transmitted to the next generation, the parental generation will become devoid of DNA, which is not happening at all, isn't it? So what happens here? Initially there is a copying of DNA, so as to, uh, so as to follow the process of this inheritance. Now during this copying of DNA, it is always linked with the changes. Isn't it? The variations as it is a biochemical process, definitely some alteration will come over there in the DNA. Now it is possible that these variations will be visible at the same time or in the later on in the later generations. But such type of alterations leads to various changes and these changes when they accumulates for millions of years in a particular uh, a particular organism or the uh, 
or in the successive generation of a particular species then definitely it is going to lead to a evolution of certain very different type of characteristics and this type of alteration further is again transmitted and that is possible through the heredity and the reproduction process so this is how we can say that once we have studied about the reproduction now we have to understand the process of heredity in this heredity we are going to study about the uh, rules of inheritance see there are so many genes in the chromosomes isn't it and all are coding for different type of characteristics so which type of characteristic is going to be visible in the next generation we are discussing about the uh, sexual reproduction since the genes are coming from two different individuals two different parents then of course uh, uh, the uh, expression of a characteristic is going to be varied so we are going to find out that which particular trait or which character could be uh, Uh, it is going to be expressed in the next generation and which is going to be suppressed so all this would be summarized in the uh, in the form of uh, uh, principles of uh, inheritance and that's what the chapter is all about and further uh, how these type of changes leads to the evolution or uh, generation of new species that we are going to continue in the next part of the chapter so here now let us uh, uh, understand the basics of heredity reproduction we have already done the entire chapter now let us understand the basics of the heredity so this heredity it is defined as the process of transmission of characteristics from one generation to the next generation now transmission of characteristics what do we mean by this particular point see what are these characteristics these are the structure or functional property of an organism uh, any organism it is showing various types of characteristics it is showing some uh, particular properties so those properties those functions those uh, uh, these functions um, they are actually known as the characteristics these characteristics they are uh, going to be transferred from the parental generation to the next generation and uh, in this particular process see the function directly suppose it is an eye color right uh, the eye color can be uh, if we are considering the human beings right the eye color can be black it can be blue we are discussing about the pupil right so that is blue black or uh, it could be green it could be brown isn't it there are different uh, uh, colors which are of course observed uh, even in the human beings now this function or this particular characteristic the color of the eye it is transferred from one generation to the next generation now if fa father is having blue eyes and mother is having black eyes then which type of characteristic is going to be transferred in the next generation whether one eye is going to be blue and the other is going to be black no it is never so isn't it it is not at all in this way it is transferred from one generation to the next generation in the form of dna that means the codes which are uh, carrying the information for such eye color that is going to be transferred to the next generation and of course that code is present in which form it is in the form of dna and such type of coding G uh, dna is known as the genes so it is not like a simply the blue color is transmitted or the black color is directly transmitted the code which is carrying the information for this eye color is the dna and this dna is transferred from one generation to the next generation and once it is transmitted then it is going to be expressed on the basis of uh, uh, its dominancy so over there either the blue color or the brown color or the combination of both the color is going to be expressed in the next generation so here this uh, characteristic which is transferred from one generation to the next is actually occurring and such a process is known as the heredity now after uh, uh, when this uh, dna is transferred right now initially what happens over there as we have studied in the process of reproduction what happens initially there is the copying of dna 
if it is uh, asexual reproduction, uh, then what will happen? This copying of DNA will take place, right? And it will be distributed into the two daughter nuclei or into the multiple cells accordingly on the basis of that what type of mode of asexual reproduction orga the organism is following. But in case of uh, uh, sexual reproduction, what happens over there? Initially, there is the formation of gamete, right? And as this gamete formation occurs, there is the for, uh, formation of these haploid cells. These gametes, of course, they themselves are the haploid cells. That means the chromosome which was present in the pair, it is transmitted, it is distributed into two haploid cells. And further, these haploid cells, they are going to fuse together that is a male gamete and a female gamete. These two haploid cells, they will fuse together and of course they will form the zygote and the process is going to continue. Now, during all these sequences, all this uh, uh, series or the, all this process, basically the cells are undergoing so many chemical changes. And such chemical changes which are taking place in the DNA that leads to the alteration in itself and that alteration it could be because of various reasons it could be because of the misreading right it could be because of several uh, physical factors or it could be because of any reason right but ultimately this dna is undergoing the process of variation also and now this variation which occurs in the dna will lead to the alteration in its characteristic also isn't it? So such variations, uh, these are bringing the changes in the uh, features of the uh, of, of the particular characteristics or the in the next generation. So ultimately, we can say these variations, which are occurring because of the alteration in the DNA, uh, they may be either minor or they could be major. Uh, even the, another point is true that these variations. They could be visible or they could be invisible. That means they are present and they are expressed uh, in an organism which could be vis uh, which could uh, which could be visualized physically, right? So that is the visible uh, variation that could be known as a phenotypic variation also. But there are some invisible variations which are not observed uh, in the same individual. In the same generation, it is possible that it is going to be visualized in the several other uh, generations. So, therefore, we can say that these could be visible or it could be invisible. Now, as we are discussing that these variations, uh, they are linked with the heredity. So, ultimately, uh, during this type of process or during this heredity, uh, when the inheritance occurs, when these characteristics are inherited to the next generation, then it is possible that they are not the identical copy of those which were present in the parental generation. So, can you think of such type of variations which are taking place in the uh, living individuals? See, uh, variations occurs in the organisms, that is for sure. We already said that either these changes could be minor or they could be major. Or even they could be visible or they could be invisible. Now, of course, the one which is invisible, we cannot demarcate that particular thing, isn't it? But something which is visible, the variation which is visible, that could be observed very easily. Isn't it? So, uh, can you think of some examples? See, uh, let us take one example here that is of the microorganisms. Uh, have you ever looked uh, over uh, at a particular colony of some microorganisms? Of course, microorganisms are something that could not be observed with the naked eyes. But uh, let us say for example, uh, fungi. Right. Have you ever seen the fungal growth over the substance? Uh, example could be like, um, uh, let us say it is a slice of bread where this uh, uh, fung fungus is growing over there. So, can you distinguish between the individual cells over there? Are they, uh, do they appear varied from each other? It is not so. 
even in the clone uh, if we are growing these uh, small bacteria in the uh, petri dish over the medium then the colonies are growing over there isn't it and of course the individual membrane uh, i'm sorry the individual member of this uh, colony could not be distinguished they looks identical there is no ways that we can distinguish them practically right of course when we observe the internal uh, the physiological or the uh, genetical uh, uh, functions or the practicals then we can uh, make out some of the uh, differences but otherwise these organisms in the same colony they appear to be same they appear to be uh, uh, identical and therefore we are calling them as the clones right but further uh, if we uh, go to the uh, some uh, open area and we observe some of the plants over there and uh, the plants they are of same species then can you make out the differences over there it is quite possible that you can find some of the minor differences see the as it is shown here in this picture also this particular plant is uh, shown here and it is having these yellow flowers over there but one of such a flower uh, one of the plant it has shown the white flower over there that means they are of same species but due to several changes uh, or the variations this flower is has now become white in color so this is uh, but this is of course not uh, prominently or it is not commonly found overall in the all of the flowers in all of the plants in this case isn't it the plant in which the variation has occurred of course that is going to show this white colored structure or white color flower in them in them sorry right so uh, we can say that these differences could are quite easily to observe in some of the plants if you observe suppose let us say a field uh the wheat field suppose right uh, the plants are growing there in the wheat field uh, field then can you make out the differences over there it is quite possible that some plants you may found uh, tall some will be short uh, the maturity level the leaf shape could be different isn't it but that is of course a minor difference and of course it is not common at all it is going to be found in few of them and that is the resultant of variations among them but of course one thing that you must think about regarding the height of that plant is that uh, you have to observe the age also isn't it the growth may vary the level or the uh, speed of the growth may vary and that may also uh, add up to the difference in the height of the organism but definitely that growth is again linked with the uh, the uh, genetic material or the expression of the genes in them so in short what we can summarize here that these variations can lead to the differences in the uh, various other organisms which are reproducing by the sexual method right now further uh, if you are going to compare the human beings then even they are the sexually reproducing organisms so these are showing much more differences major differences are observed in these human beings except the identical twins there is no two human being which is sub, uh, which appear similar to each other in terms of body design they appear similar but further you can observe their uh, different features different characteristics they are going to uh, they are not going to be similar to each other at all isn't it they are showing major differences among each other and therefore it is very easily easy for uh, identifying the specific uh, human being in the huge population uh, just to forget about the huge population we can even say that the parents and their children even they are not identical to each other they are not uh, they are having lot of differences uh, between them and further even if we compare two children or two offsprings of the same generation of the same couple then also you can find out the differences why these differences are taking place they are of course because of the variations in their genetic material it is because of the differences in the combination of uh, uh, these uh, gamete uh, the uh, genetic material of the two gametes and this is what leads to the variations among the different organisms
So we can say that these uh, uh, whatever characteristics are present in these organisms, they are of course inherited from their parental generations, but they are always linked with the variations. And these variations, the degree of variation in these organisms, it is of course uh, very less in the case of asexual reproduction, but it is very high in the case of sexually reproducing organisms. Let us just summarize the reasons behind this, and then we are going to uh, we will be we will continue with the topic. So whether it is asexual reproduction or it is sexual reproduction, the initial step over there is going to be the copying of DNA. Asexual reproduction. Once this uh, copying of DNA is over, then it is going to divide into daughter cells, right? And this is how the uh, reproduction over uh, there occurs in these particular organisms. So in this case, the reason behind the variation is limited. And what is that reason? Uh, it is only the error which occurs during the copying of DNA. So this may occur. It may not occur. Both chances are there, and of course, they may be expressed or they may not be expressed. So this is only the reason behind the uh, variation among these particular organisms, right? Uh, reasons behind error uh, or this alteration could be anything, like uh, some ultraviolet rays or physical uh, pH or temperature or anything. Isn't it? But definitely, it is only linked with this change or alteration in the sequence of the DNA. Fine. Uh, beside this, in the sexual reproduction, the variation is very high. Why it is so? Because number one, error during copying of DNA. Again, it is taking place here in this process also. So this is one of the uh, causing. Um, uh, I mean, causing agent behind the variation. Now, beside this, the other reason is the accumulation of variations in the gametes. That means, uh, in this process, there are the involvement of two parents. The two different individuals are involved in this process, and each parent is providing their own gametes. Right. So these gametes, they are containing the genetic material of two different organisms, and when these two different organisms are combining their genetic material in the next generation, then definitely in the next generation, uh, there will be the uh, uh, the uh, inter uh, combination of the uh, different organism. The characteristics are going to be the mixture of two different organisms. Right. Besides this, these gametes have already uh, accumulated the variations from their previous generations. So this uh, variation which is uh, uh, inherited in the next generation is not only from the parental generation, but it is from their forefathers and four forefathers and so on. Right. Uh, besides this, the another reason is the meiosis. What is this meiosis? It is a type of cell division in which uh, there is the production of uh, haploid cells. Fine. So in this process, there is one of the step. In the initial step, there is the recombination of genes. That is uh, commonly you must have heard about crossing over. We have discussed already it in the previous sessions. So this crossing over is again adding up to the uh, re, uh, 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 I'm sorry, the alteration of the DNA sequence in a particular chromosome. And of course, when such altered DNA is transferred, it is inherited. This is going to lead to the variation. So this is how you can observe that variations, they are taking place uh, in sexually as well as asexually reproducing organisms. And whatever change occurs, that is further going to be inherited in the next generation. So these variations as they are getting accumulated in the next generations. So ultimately, uh, when, the, uh, means when millions of generations would be considered, then of course this variation, this inheritance of the varied genes, this is going to become the base for the evolution. So let us see how this accumulation is in, uh, I mean, it accumulation occurs and let us find out some of the examples. See, uh, when we consider the accumulation of variations during asexual reproduction, then which type of organisms comes in our mind? 
Commonly, these are supposed to be unicellular organisms or even they can be multicellular organisms. But these organisms, they are reproducing by the process of cell division. Right. Now, in such type of process, there is a production of identical offspring. Usually, the uh, the generation, the offsprings which are produced by this method, they are identical to the parental generation. And even of course, not only the parental generation, they are very much similar to each other also. So such type of organisms, they are known as the clones. Example, we have already uh, stated about the bacteria. Isn't it? If this bacteria, it divides into two organisms, there is no way that we can just, uh, we can, uh, just discriminate between these three organisms. Isn't it? Now, uh, uh, one important thing, we are saying that these three organisms, but always remember, in this case, when this bacteria is further, uh, it is producing the two daughter cells, then itself, its identity is lost. So, how it is taking place? It is by the division. One cell is there, it will divide into two. So, now two organisms are there, that first is lost. Now, further these two, they will form the next generation. They will further divide and form the uh, uh, next, uh, uh, the organisms of the next generation. So, this is how, in short, we can say the uh, clones are formed in the colony. Fine. Now, during this, what happened? In some of the species, some variations may occur. And of course, here it is because of the error in the copying of DNA. Now, this variation which has occurred in the DNA, it may get expressed in the same individual or it may remain unexpressed. It is present over there, but it is not expressed in that particular generation or in the organism. Now, further what will happen? Then what is the, uh, what is the advantage of this particular thing? This advantage may be provided in future or it may provide disadvantage also. Both sides are true. Now, of course, they can provide advantage in the future generations. Uh, let us say for one example. Uh, this is the diagram which is shown here. It is a bacteria. Let us assume it is a bacteria, right? And it is having some various features, the characteristics. We have just represented it. It is not exactly the bacteria that looks like this. Okay, this is simply a representation so as to explain the process of variation and inheritance. Fine. So, this particular bacteria is having the various types of features here. Now, when it divides into two daughter cells, let us say they have obtained some of the change in the DNA. There is some alteration because of which the difference has occurred in the particular trait. Let us say in uh, one of the uh, daughter cell, this uh, upper oval shape it, as it was purple before, now it has become orange. This is simply a representation. We can say in the gene 1, some change must have occurred due to which the trait which was associated with the gene 1, that has altered in the next generation. Similarly, if alteration occurs in some of the other gene, then the other variant would have been produced. Fine. And that is what represented here in this diagram in these two different uh, individuals. So, further, when these two daughter new, uh, organisms, they will further divide, they are going to accumulate the variation. And of course, when this variation is inherited, there are, chance, the, there are the chances that some other variations may occur in some of the other DNA also, other gene also, and which will result in several other different type of variation further. So, this is how a variation occurs at particular level and then that particular variation is going to be inherited in the next generation. Now, this may happen or it may not happen. The daughter cell which is produced, it may be identical to this mother cell uh, as it is. Clear? So, now the point is that, of course, these genes which are inherited, uh, the varied genes which are inherited, they are not expressed at this particular point. They are not providing any advantage to this organism. But, let us assume, if these uh, uh, bacteria, they are uh, surviving at temperature, let us say something 37 degrees centigrade and because of several reasons, 
in future if the temperature becomes high let us assume it becomes 40 or 42 or something then what will happen most of the bacteria will die but the one let us say for example this particular uh, bacteria which has uh, this particular variation in this uh, cell it may tolerate the varied temperature it may tolerate this high temperature because of this varied gene in them so this varied gene uh, when it was inherited uh, in different number of organisms so all those organisms which are having this inherited uh, inherited varied gene they are able to tolerate the particular high temperature and rest all other organisms in the colony they will die so later on this colony which is having this gene is going to survive so this is how this variation in the gene has provided the advantage in the uh, in the changing conditions uh, these changing conditions could be anything related to temperature or any other example so this is how these uh, variations they are inherited in the organisms which reproduce asexually right now the another thing as we said that uh, this uh, inheritance or heredity uh, it is linked with variations and this variation is a base for the evolution so how it is proving that this is the base for evolution also see this is an example of unicellular organisms so, so uh, here this inheritance which is shown uh, this is actually providing a particular advantage and is of course at a very uh, small level so even uh, when such changes are accumulated they may give rise to the mutant species also and further that species it would uh, inherit some more uh, type of variations and may become a new type of species so here if we compare these two organisms they are definitely different from each other so now the point is uh, in a population how can we find out that which particular uh, character or which particular trait is actually uh, it is uh, it is uh, old or it is the recent one so that is the thing so a, a very simple method to find out this particular thing is the number of organisms which are having a particular trait for example again let us say in this colony uh, this particular circle which is shown here in this representative diagram it is purple and you can find out that most of the organisms in this particular diagram they are having this particular trait so we can say this is commonly found in the living organisms isn't it in the population most of the organisms are having this particular trait so it should be uh, suggested it is suggested that uh, this trait must be the older one it must have evolved uh, uh, in the previous era as compared to any other characteristic uh, for example the other characteristic let us say for example this oval structure shown here which is orange in color so it is present only in these three organisms in this colony right so if it is present in a few organisms and the one which is present in the uh, commonly in most of the organisms what do you assume we can assume that the one which is present in most of the organisms should have evolved earlier as compared to the trait which was present in only few organisms so this is how we can uh, find out that which species is the recent and which is older in terms of the process of evolution now if we compare the accumulation of variations uh, during the sexual reproduction then you will find that these variations which are inherited during sexual reproduction they are more pronounced that means uh, they are uh, visible they are clearly observed in the uh, population for example you can see this uh, in the form of human beings also at each generation there is a marked changes in the two organisms which uh, is of course making it unidentical to the other organism kids of same parents two children of the same couple even they are not similar to each other they are not at all identical to each other we can easily find out the we can find out the differences in these two organisms 
isn't it? So that is what here it is shown in this particular uh, representative diagram. Uh, this uh, human being, when it is producing the two individual, of course they are having some marked changes uh, due to which you can easily distinguish between them. And further, when these organisms they are reproducing, again they are going to accumulate different types of variations. Uh, and the one which has been inherited from the previous generation, even that is going to be inherited at each level. Now, probably it is going to be exactly the same as the previous one or it may be varied further. So, this is how we can say that in the sexual reproduction, it is quite easy to observe these variations and um, it is very prominent over there. The reasons we have already discussed for this particular thing. Oh, well, these particular changes or the uh, variations, they may be advantageous or they may be disadvantageous. See, if the uh, variation is uh, uh, very drastic or it is in the long segment of DNA, definitely it is going to create a lot of change in the characteristic features. And it may lead to several abnormal conditions also, the abnormal situations, abnormal characteristics in the next individual. Isn't it? Uh, beside this, uh, it may be, uh, it may lead to the generation of several diseases in the living organisms, right? And if it is very, very much uh, prominent in the DNA, it may even lead to the death of the organism. But on the other hand, as we are saying, variation is the base for evolution, so definitely it is uh, also advantageous. Let us find out what are the advantages of the variations. So the major uh, variations, uh, I'm sorry, the major advantages of variations, they could be summarized in these three main headings. They are adaptation, they are inheritance of the uh, characteristics and of course the evolution. So basically adaptation is a process uh, in which the organism, uh, uh, it is uh, organism is uh, able to cope up with the surrounding changing conditions. That means they can survive in the changing environment uh, uh, according to their uh, uh, according to their characteristics. See, in this case, suppose there are some uh, environmental changes as we have discussed about the bacteria. Example of bacteria which is uh, uh, exposed to a high temperature. So, if that variant, if that varied gene was present in that bacteria, then only it was able to survive in these environment, changing environmental conditions. Same is true for this particular uh, bacteria as well as other type of living organisms. If the variations are there, of course we are able to cope up with the physical changing conditions and this adds up to the survival of the living organism. Now one organism which is able to survive in these conditions, uh, that is going to live further. The others which are not able to cope up with the condition, they will further die. On the other hand, this uh, variation, it is helping in the inheritance of the characteristics. See, variations, if they are limited to a particular generation, then it is, uh, oh, the advantage is limited to only single individual. But this is not so. This variation, it is further inherited in the next generations and further so on. Right. So, this type of transmission is helping in providing the advantage of such variations to the maximum number of the organisms in that population. Of course, that uh, uh, generation uh, or the organism which is linked with the particular lineage of that particular um, um, population. Um, in other words, we can say like uh, if organism is there, it is uh, producing two organisms or two uh, offspring. So one of the organism is having this variation. So this variation, varied particular individual, when it is reproducing further, the advantage is provided to this particular lineage rather than the other offspring of the same uh, parental generation, uh, say same parent organism, right? Or the offspring which is uh, obtained or produced from the same parent. Right. Now, further, the another advantage of variation is the evolution. We are continuously saying this point that these variations, when they are accumulated in the uh, organisms for millions of years, 
then this leads to the evolution of new characteristics in the existing organisms and they could be advanced or it may be the disappearance of various other organisms right so such process uh, variation is actually uh, becoming the base for the evolution so further we are going to discuss much more about the chapter that is heredity and for now only this much so we'll meet in the next session uh, very soon till then thank you so much have a nice day